Good morning. Welcome to the lecture on computer organization and architecture. The topic is on standard I.O. interfaces. The contents for this uh, lecture would be on looking at the standard I.O. interfaces like the PCI bus, its electrical characteristics, read mode operations, USB versions, traffic modes, architectures and packet structures. Now, Coming to standard I.O. interfaces, there were uh, different standard I.O. buses which was developed and many of them are now obsolete. We had industrial standard bu a bus which was developed, we had EIAC which was developed. Now IBM had also developed its industrial standard architecture bus for many of its uh, systems. But the three predominantly used bus standards in the modern computers are the PCI which is peripheral component Inter interconnect. SCSI small computer system interface, USB universal serial bus. So now coming on to the standard I/O interface, the uh, the placement of these I/Os um, I/O interfaces within the architecture. You can see in this diagram that um, the main memory and processor has a processor internal bus, to which there is a bridge uh, bridge which is connected. Now the bridge is actually a circuit that translates the signals from the processor to the connecting bus on the other end. Now typically this is called as a PCI bus because it connects the PCI with the uh, processor. So all the instructions that comes from the processor is shared onto the PCI compliant devices which is being attached onto the PCI bus. Now PCI has one of the important characteristics that it is a plug and play. It has extensibility. So it can add on any other devices that can be added on to this bus, maybe an additional memory that you are seeing here or another bus like SCSI or a USB or an Ethernet interface and so on. So this provides an extensibility to add on some more buses to PCI uh, bus and this is how the expansion on the motherboard happens. Now coming to peripheral component interconnect bus, it was introduced in 1992. It's a low cost bus, it's a plug and play capability, mostly processor independent and it involves burst data transfer from the computer to the compliant devices, supports all the address configurations that is memory, I.O. configuration, I.O. to I.O. mapped configurations, all these configurations are supported on PCI. Now the data and the address addressing mechanism in case of the uh, PCI is quite different from the processor internal addresses. The processor internal address is based on the address bus that it has. It has, but but the addressing that is used in case of PCI are its own addresses to address the devices which is being attached to the PCI. So if if at all a processor needs to contact to any other device, it has to go through bridge. Bridge is recognized as a I/O device. So the address for the uh, bridge will be known to the processor and thereby the address will be decoded by the bridge and corresponding device attached to the PCI will be addressed. So the master in the PCI is called as the uh, initiator. The uh, devices which receives the data or response to read and write signals are called as the target. Now the PCI keying in mechanism is very important because PCI cards comes with the varying standards. One of the standards here is shown as the 3.3 volt, the other is the 5 volts, what you see. And again under this uh, voltage, you also have 32 bit as well as 64 bit cards. That is what you see in, 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 in the uh, 5 volts case as well. So uh, the, uh, the combined form is the universal uh, card. The universal card comes with both the voltages, that is 3.3 as well as 5 volts and it is 32 bit as well as 64 bit versions are also available. Now the slots look something like this in the uh, motherboard. So where in which you are going to plug a 64 bit or uh, 3 volts or a 64 bit 5 volts versions of the cards. Now a simple ethernet or a PCI card can look something like this. This is Intel's gigabit ethernet card. So it looks something like this. So these are the PCI keying in, uh, keying in pins which will be inserted onto this. This is the PCI bracket 
where in which the external uh, wires or the ethernet uh, rj45 cable comes and sits inside this so this is how the pci card looks like now some of the data transfer signals on pci are the clock the very important thing here is the pci bus is a synchronous mechanism bus so it works on the reference of a reference clock so the clock here works with a 33 or a 66 megahertz clock so there is a frame which is to initiate or indicate the start of the transactions there is an ad signal which is nothing but the address and data multiplex signals which is 32 bits and later extensible to 64 bits so the control information and the byte enable uh, signals are sent through this uh, uh, signal called a uh, c slash b which is a 4 byte uh, line or a 4 bit line uh, wherein which the command as well as the byte enable uh, goes through so you also have the uh, initiator ready as well as target ready signals to initiate that the initiator is ready for the transaction and the tra uh, and correspondingly the target should be ready to accept the data on also so you also have device select which is used for selecting the appropriate device after decoding the address at the bridge level uh, or the address that is being placed during the uh, or that is being latched so based on that the address is being decoded and one of the devices is selected so for that the device select signals are happening so this will avoid the um, issues that is there with the bus arbitration process and other things so we don't have all the uh, devices being autonomously talking to each other so the device select will select which of the device is to be used for doing the transactions now you also have initia uh, initialization device select it is also for, uh, if it is a memory transfer between two or more cards you need an initiator which is apart from your PCI bridge and that for that you need a, a signal called as initiators device select now let us come to this read operation on the timing uh, on the PCI bus so you have clock pulses which is being continuously given the frame is enabled at the first clock cycle so the frame is the indication for doing the data transfers so immediately after that the address is being latched and the command will be sent or the control signal will be sent to the appropriate device so that base that is based on the device select later on the device select will be switched on so once when the command and the address is being latched the data happens at the third clock cycle after the byte enable signal is enabled so once once when the byte enable signal is enabled the transfer of data can happen similarly at the same time in the da uh, data transfer happens the initiator as well as the target devices should be ready to do the transaction so this is the read operation that is performed on the pci bus now coming to the device configuration whenever a new device is to be added on to pci bus there is a way in which the address is being calculated or the address is being stored so each the IO devices that is connected to PCI its configuration details will be available in the ROM memory and it stores about all the information about the device so the configurations of the ROM will have the address configuration address space where it should be accessible and all the other details will be available so the PCI initialization software where uh, reads this whenever the device is to be activated or the device is being activated then the PCI software will read the address from the ROM and uh, it, it may be this these device may be a printer or a um, keyboard or any kind of device that is being connected to the PCI bus the devices are ad assigned addresses during the initialization process so uh, the uh, configuration address space will use different mechanism each device will have input signals called as initialization device select so the electrical characteristics as we have mentioned earlier PCI is used with 5 volts or 3.3 volts power supply now coming to another bus standard which is the um, universal bus or universal serial bus which is a very popular kind of a bus which is being industry developed standard bus is a collaborative efforts of different industries like Compaq, HP and other companies has capability to work with a variant speed with 1.5 megabits per second which is the low speed full speed is 12 megabits per second the high speed is 480 megabits per second 
the main advantage of usb is that it removes something called as port limitation now earlier when you see the case of uh, pci pca has limited ports and if you want to add some more devices on to pci bus you will have to buy a pci expansion uh, slot and then add the device onto that expansion slot now the device characteristics of the uh, devices that is being added on to usb are based on the traffic that is being supported by the usb so usb also supports plug and play in a true nature so uh, the characteristics of plug and play is basically to identify what kind of a device is it so this may be through the uh, device softwares which is uh, which enables to understand what kind of a device it is once when the device software selects it that is your driver installation is done so the uh, device is ready to work any number of times so the need for usb again comes to the fact that it is a low cost bus it is a tree topology based bus it overcomes the difficulties of the limited number of io ports on different bus standards that we have gone through earlier it accommodates wide range of data transfer characteristics for io devices including telephone internet and other uh, connections so it uh, as i said it is a truly plug and play way of uh, handling the devices now the port limitations as we have discussed earlier many of the parallel ports and serial ports have uh, limited number of ports on the uh, boards as well as other ports like pci or any other bus has limited ports so when you want to expand the number of uh, ports for it there is always an additional cost which is involved to it when you come to the case of usb usb is basically a tree structured so you can extend the functionality of hub to any level so that makes it easier to add newer ports as well as newer devices that can be connected to the system so the plug and play here means any kind of device let it be a speaker or any kind of device a webcam or any uh, devices can be added on to this uh, usb and the device driver softwares will facilitate in recognition of the devices and the services that it provides based on which the usb has to find out which kind of a traffic that the device is generating and which kind of a traffic it needs to communicate to the processor so the electrical characteristics of usb usb has four independent wires one of them is the voltage which is plus 5 volts the other one is the ground the two in between is the data uh, uh, data signals or data pins which are used usually they are termed as d minus and d plus Uh, in the coming slides you will be able to see the pin diagram where it shows about it so the, at a low speed zeros and ones are transmitted by sending the high voltage state for high speed links differential transmissions encoding is used for it now this is the connectors the connector has got four pins one of them is the voltage the other one is the ground the two in betweens are the data carriage so this is for usb 2.0 now coming to usb 3.0 it makes use of optical um, way of sending the data so the connectors are optical based and hence it can support up to a speed of 5 gbps now coming to the pinouts of usb 2.0 as i mentioned this is a visual look of the usb 2.0 pins uh, one of them is the uh, five plus 5 volts the other one is the ground the other two is the data carriage which is d plus and d minus now different types of usb 2.0 ports and connectors are something like this so you have type a uh, connector type b connectors type mini a and mini b the mini a and mini b are usually used for handheld devices uh, the most commonly used is the type a connector and type b is used for some of the devices like printers and other devices now other available ports and connectors you have got express cards which were very popular in case of laptops earlier you have got thunderbolt which is another form of connectors you have got firewire port which is uh, used for high performance devices you have got esata which is used for hard disks which has a high transfer rate and many other connectors so each of them are used for uh, their own pur- uh, their own purpose each of them are used for their own uh, um, Uh, data tra- transfers and things like that so coming to the next slide uh, we have the uni- uh, universal serial bus tree structure uh, if you can look at this uh, you have the root hub which is being connected to the host 
uh, where uh, the the root hub takes the role of a bridge which talks to the host computer um, and the root hub has an extensibility it, it is like a basically a, like a binary tree where it has got two more hubs under it and it can have other other additional devices so that just as you see here the hubs can be extended the io devices can be connected at the bottom so if you want you can have some more devices which can be connected at the bottom now the four different uh, types of transfers in usb are control transfer bulk transfer uh, interrupt transfer and isochronous transfer the control transfers are usually used for lossless transmissions uh, it is basically used to configure the devices uh, the bulk transfers are used for uh, bulk data transfer between the devices maybe you have connected an external now the interrupt transfer allows uh, the data to be sent uh, through human interrupt uh, devices like mouse joystick or any other things which has uh, which is basically working on interrupt based mechanisms now you also have got isochronous data transfers which is for streaming of the real time data you might have devices which requires real time data to, to be transferred for example you have connected a, uh, a webcam wherein which the audio and re, uh, video has to be processed onto a real time and it has to be sent to the processor for further uh, actions now the isochronous uh, traffic is a very pro predominantly used uh, traffic in case of uh, usb you have commonly seen webcams or any other uh, devices which require real time processing to be connected now in case of the working of the isochronous data transfer the frame will be set for 1 millisecond and the frame signal will be sent across uh, to uh, to the device on every uh, 1 millisecond so the start of frame is uh, sent from the root hub for ev every 1 millisecond the on the arrival of sof uh, packet the device constitutes a regular clock, clock signal and uh, on its own purpose so the start of frame actually carries 11 bit frame number so each frame what you are going to send is a unique uh, frame number following each uh, sof packet the host carries the uh, carries out the input and output transfers to the isochronous devices this means that each device has an opportunity for an input and output transfer at every 1 millisecond now coming to the summary of this presentation or this lecture uh, we have pci we have looked into pci standard bus uh, its electrical characteristics its read mode operations and things like that usb we have extensively looked into its uh, operations its features its advantage and etc it can support multiple devices it uh, it uh, it has uh, port uh, uh, it all, uh, it removes the port limitations as its predecessor bus has and lot of advantages are there with respect to usb now some of the additional resources which uh, you, you can refer to are uh, the videos which talks about the pci expansion slot and as well as usb's um, uh, internal architecture how does it work with a much more deeper insight you can look into these youtube videos thank you